All right, so let's look at what we call brief job order cost sheets. Now, these things, uh, you know, depending on what class you're in, uh, this may not be something that you really have to do, but you're probably going to, um, regardless of what, you know, managerial accounting class you're in, accounting to whatever, whatever name we have for it, you're going to be looking at job order costing and it's basically inevitable that uh, you are going to have to uh, deal with a situation where we have where you have multiple jobs that have been started some of those jobs have been finished some of those jobs are unfinished and then oh by the way some of the finished jobs have actually act, uh, actually been sold so um, what we're going to do is we're going to look at a way to keep track of those jobs. Then we're going to answer some questions about them. And uh, hopefully uh, you'll be able to pick up on some stuff that uh, will help you on an exam or on your homework. So it says here that job order cost sheets are crucial organizing tools. We've talked about job order cost sheets before. And it says that they are the way that companies keep track of the cost of unique jobs. So when we talk about unique, that is basically synonymous with uh, the, a job order costing system. So let's go ahead and look at an example here. And um, so it looks like what we have here is uh, we're dealing with the month of June, the beginning of June specifically, and Galway Company had two jobs in process. They had uh, job number 78 and job number 79 with the following accumulated cost information. Uh, so we've, we've got some detail here for these two jobs, and then we've got a balance for job 78 and a job uh, for 79. So these, I want you to understand what's going on here. These are jobs that were started at some point in time prior to the month of June, not in June, but prior to the month of June. So these are beginning balances here. Further information, it says that during June, uh, two more jobs, numbers 80 and 81 were started. So these will have no beginning work in process. That's what this amount is right here, as far as we know right now. Okay, so it says the following direct materials and direct labor costs were added to the four jobs during the month of June. Well, before we get into that, what I'd like to do is I want to switch over to just a regular blank piece of paper. And I seem to recall that those were job 78, job 79. And then we were going to start job 80 and job 81. And then we also had a uh, beginning balance. Okay, that says beginning balance. And I'm going to have to go back over here because I've already forgotten what those were. So 2350 for job 78 and 3050 for job 79. And I'm also going to put here a zero for these two jobs because they had no uh, beginning balance. All right, so let's go back to our scenario for just a moment. All right, so uh, you know, we have those four going on during the month of June. So let's see what we have here. It says that for job 78, which we already had going, we're gonna add direct materials and direct labor of $400. So I'm going to abbreviate here, direct materials and direct labor. And let's see here, let me go back. I've already forgotten 500 and 400 respectively. Okay. 
So we're going to add $500 in materials and $400 in direct labor to job 78. We're going to add 1110 and 1400 to job 79. And then we're going to uh, add $900 of materials and $2,000 of direct labor to job number 80. So 900 and 2,000. Okay, very good. And then uh, job 81, $100 of direct materials and $320 in direct labor. So 100 and 320. All right, so we've got that going for us that we're keeping track of. It says that at the end of June, jobs 78, 79, and 80 were completed. All right, so further information, only job 79 was sold. Helpful information here on June the 1st, the balance in finished goods was zero. So what we're saying here is that um, our finished goods inventory now is going to be made up of job 78. Now, these are not the full cost for job 78 uh, and job 80. We're going to have cost of goods sold for job 79 because it was sold. And I don't see anything here about job 81. So it's going to still be in work in process. Now I wanna warn you, we do not have all of our information yet, but what we can do just to kind of help ourselves out here, finished goods, cost of goods sold, uh, finished goods and work in process. Okay. But again, we're missing something, aren't we? Because I don't see where we added any manufacturing overhead yet to any of these jobs uh, during the month of June. Okay. So with that in mind, let's see what we have here says that they want us to calculate the overhead rate based on direct labor cost. Hmm. Well, let's see here. We can actually do this by going back over here to our beginning slide. They want us to calculate overhead based upon direct labor. Now, if we notice here, we've got direct labor in job 78 and job uh, set us, uh, yeah, 78 and 79 both. So we've got direct labor of 600 and we've got applied overhead of 750. This took place in, let's just say May. And over here, we have direct labor for job 79 of 1,000 and we have applied overhead of 1,250. Well, let's just see what we have here. Let's get a calculator and make it smaller. And then we're going to drag it over here. I want to show you something. Remember, when we are uh, calculating our predetermined overhead rate, it is always going to be uh, our estimated overhead is going to be our numerator and our denominator is going to be the activity level or the cost driver. Okay, so that is not what we're doing here. That has already been done for us, but they want us to tell them what the overhead rate is. So we can kind of go at this backwards and we can kind of pretend that we were doing this. So uh, applied overhead, that they applied was 750 and we can actually divide that by the $600 I'm, I'm sorry the uh, direct labor yeah it is six, it is $600 
and we come up with a rate of a dollar twenty-five or one hundred and twenty-five percent uh, applied overhead is applied at a rate of one hundred and twenty-five percent of direct labor. Okay, if you don't believe me, watch this: six hundred times uh, one point two five, which would be one hundred and twenty-five percent, is seven fifty. So a dollar twenty-five. Look over here, twelve fifty. Uh, whoops, let's make let's start over. Twelve fifty divided by a thousand equals a dollar twenty-five. So we were able to figure out. Now this is not how they did it. They didn't use these figures. What they did was they figured something like, um, like they estimated something like five hundred thousand. I'm making this up, okay? Five hundred thousand dollars in estimated uh, overhead, and then they divided that by an estimated direct labor cost of let's just say four hundred thousand, and they came up with this a dollar twenty-five that way, okay? We were just backing into it here using the numbers that they've provided us. Okay, so where was that question at? Uh, let's see here. Yeah, so they want us to calculate the overhead rate, uh, rate based on direct labor cost. We just did it. There it is. It's $1.25. Okay. Um, I will warn you that the way that we did that, we didn't have enough information to do it any other way. We took, in, we took work that had already been done and we kind of backed into it. It's very likely that on your test or homework, that is not how you will do it you'll you'll be given the estimate of five hundred thousand dollars or something like that and then you'll be given the estimate of direct labor cost and that's how you for the whole year and that's how you would figure it out it says prepare a job a brief job order cost sheet for all four jobs um okay well let's do that so what i'm going to do is i'm going to eh, let's see here if we can shrink this down a little bit so we've got direct labor here for this job uh, in the amount of $400. So we're going to take that, we're going to take this $1.25 here, and we're going to multiply it by $400. Okay. And so applied overhead, I'm going to do this AOH, is going to be $500 for job 78. Okay. We had $1,400 of direct labor for job 79. We're going to multiply that by 1.25, and that is $1,750. Okay, we had $2,000 here for job 80 times 1.25 equals $2,500. And then we have $320 of direct labor uh, for uh, job 81, 320 times 1.25 is going to give us $400. All right. So let's hold on to that information. I'm going to go back over here. They said, prepare a brief job order cost sheet for the four jobs. Show the balance as of June the 1st, as well as direct materials and direct labor added in June. Apply overhead to the four jobs for the month of June and show the ending balances. Now let's see here. We have done all of that already, except for one thing. We have to tally these up. So let's just see here. Uh, 2350 plus 500 plus 400. I'm on job 78 plus 500 equals 3750. Job 79. Beginning balance of 3,050 plus additional 
direct materials of 1110 plus additional direct labor of 1400 plus new applied overhead of 1750 equals 7310. So just real briefly, this 2350 and this 3050, if you don't remember from the slide, um, this is this has uh, overhead, this has materials, this has uh, direct labor, it has everything. Okay. Job 80, we had zero, so I'm not going to mess with that. We added direct materials of 900 plus direct labor of 2,000 plus uh, applied overhead of 2,500 all in the month of June. Gives us a total balance of $5,400. I'm just going to jot something down here. Our uh, predetermined rate equals 125% um, of direct labor cost. Okay. And then job 81, we had $100 of direct materials plus 320 in labor plus $400 in applied overhead. So not much going on with this job. 820. Okay. Let's go back and see what else they want. Calculate the ending balances of work in process and finished goods as of June 30th. Okay. Well, let's just do that. Now, for work in process, consists of job 81 eight hundred and twenty dollars there it is right there all right now finished goods finished goods is going to consist of because we labeled these before based on the scenario 3750 for job 78 and 5400 for um, job number 80. So 3750 plus 5400 equals 9150. And I suspect that we're now going to be asked to calculate cost of goods sold for June. Fine. We can certainly do that. Cost of goods sold is job number 79. And that's just simply going to be the 7310. Let's go back to our little uh, slide here and see what we have. They're going to show us briefly how to do the predetermined overhead rate. They took that same 750. I, I tested our math using the 1250 and the 1000 as well. There's our 125%. Here's our job order cost sheet. I couldn't have done it any better myself. I guess I should probably put these lines here. In accounting, that means we're done adding stuff for now. Okay, so there it is, 820 for uh, number three. They want to know work in process. We already did that. We also gave them finished goods inventory of 9150. And we gave them cost of goods sold by 7310. But remember, the whole key to this was we read and we paid attention to what we were reading. These are the jobs that were completed 
So 78 and 80 are finished goods. 79 was sold. It's cost of goods sold. That leaves only job number 81. It is work in process.